Hi friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Amanda May and this is my channel Art of Design where we celebrate cross stitch, sustainable stitching and really making all the things. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm so happy you're back to spend some time with me today. So you are in my office with me right now. I have a special video this week. I am going to show you kind of a compilation of everything I've been working on this week. Yes, it's cross stitch, but it's also some gadgets and some other like home things that I've been doing around the house, particularly in my office to make it more functional and more user friendly as a business owner, as a crafter, as a professional, as a cross stitcher, all the things. <laughs> I have been busy working on my fair entries to enter into the Maryland State Fair. So I have been fully finishing all the cross stitches I have completed this year. And so that has been a lot. <laughs> I always kind of wait till the end. And then when it comes to actually <laughs> time to fully finish. I'm like, oh, I have to do all of this for the fair. But it's really good for me because it keeps me accountable. And I'm fully finishing work that maybe I wouldn't normally fully finish uh, as Pam and stuff of just keep stitch and say, you know, the under the bed box you stitch and it goes under the bed in your special little storage spot until you are either ready to fully finish it or pay someone to finish it or what have you. So the fair is a great motivator for me. <laughs> to fully finish my work. So I'm going to show you all of that. And then I'm going to show you uh, the craft project tech stuff that I've been doing in my office. I want to show you my Sullivan's yeah. better board that I've been using, my new cross stitch lamp, and some of the finds that I have. We're also going to open. Are you excited for this? Okay, okay. I uh, ordered where I, I bid on a antique sampler on eBay and it just came in the mail this afternoon. So I am, we're gonna open this up and see what it looks like. I'm so excited. I am going to the Midwest this upcoming week. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll be able to stop at a cross stitch store or two and film and show you all of that journey and like a blog style. I'm hoping I can do that. Uh, I've been cross stitching in the evenings. I'm working on a Kathy Barrick sampler piece, which I'll show you with my light review. And again, fully finishing stuff. I found some really cool things at the thrift store to fully finish some of my things with. And yeah, just all the things. So want to open this with me real fast and then I'll show you all the other goodies. All right. Oh, let's see what we can do here. I gotta get, I gotta get my special tool. The, okay, so fun fact about this, it's a box opener. And in one of my Amazon packages, they had the person packing the packages had dropped this into my box. So I ended up getting this in my packaging. And then when I told Amazon I got it, they're like, but I said, you know, I had something extra in my box I'm not supposed to have. They're like, you can go ahead and keep it. You don't need to return it. So. That is how I got this uh, box opener. And of course, when I wanna show you on camera, it's not letting me. So hold on a second, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna pause this. All right, I got the box open. Oh, we got, ah. All right, here's the next part of it. So fun story about this sampler. I, <laughs> my cool light here, let me move it up. I I bid on this, but I didn't expect to win it. And so I was actually pleasant, pleasantly surprised that my bid went through and I was able to win this. Oh my gosh, all right, hold on. All right, I think I've almost got it here. So it looks like it's been professionally framed, so that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. It has, it's like we've got a mat and everything. Oh, that's neat. The pictures weren't the best um, with the auction. So, oh my gosh, awesome. So this is a wool sampler on canvas and it says Sophie Dab, D-A-B 1856. 
There is the Alphabet. It's like an variegated color. It doesn't look like they're full cross stitches up here. Yes, yeah, some of them are and some of them aren't. And then the full alphabet, like in cursive, lowercase, then like a, a border here of plant her name, and then a series of motifs down here. I liked it because it like the, the gentleman and the key. So the two, the key, there's an urn, a house, a, this looks to me like a monument with the um, chalice and the and flames coming out. So I don't know if that's a memorial. Two birds. Well, that's really cool. So I impulse bid on this sampler and I won it. So now, look, I got a project I need to do. I need to reproduce a sampler. So I don't know if I should do it in wool or in cotton or in silk. How, what do you think? How should I reproduce this? I've done my one reproduction sampler I did in the Alana, the 12 weight wool and acrylic blend. This was the original here. And then the, the uh, reproduction that I did that was stitched by Deborah, which was awesome. She stitched it all up. And yeah, so should I do over dyed cotton, wool blend, silk, let me know. What should I do? All right, let's let's uh, look at so the other stuff that I've been working on this week. Do 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 do. It's fair prep. All right, you're in my office, and I am getting all ready here for this year's fair, and I've lined up everything, and I have decided what category each one of my finishes is going to go into, and now comes the fun part of actually like <laughs> fully finishing them. So I have a box that of, oh, hi, sweetie. I have a box of supplies that uh, I'm going to pull out and look at and see how I'm going to fully finish. But I wanted to show you all of my goodies. So everything here is on my better board. It's from Sullivan's and it is amazing. So you put it down on a traditional ironing board and then you have this amazing work surface to work on, right? Fantastic. So I'm going to show you all my entries really fast and then, yeah, then I got to get started on actually fully finishing everything. So the first one is this Bent Creek, this snowy owl globe. I'm going to enter this one. This is from Max's new book, Pigeon Coop Designs, and it is Cross Stitch in the Forest. And I am almost done almost done stitching Snow Queen. I got an advanced copy of this from his publisher. So Page Street Publishing. So thank you so much for sending me an advanced copy. I immediately saw this, fell in love with it and was like, oh my gosh, I have to stitch it. So I am working on this right now and I love it. This is on a piece of 16 count Ada fabric and I got a swatch from 123 Stitch uh, from their th their fabric selection so it was picture this plus I forget what it's called but I love it and then I'm stitching it with all the call for DMC but I did decide to try out I've never stitched with Overa Swa silk before so I grabbed a white and I'm stitching all the white parts instead of in DMC I'm trying it with the Overa Swa and I love it so much. All right, since filming my fair walkthrough, I did finish this, my owl, and I have pinned it. I use like sequin pins here. They're actually a little thicker than traditional sequin pins, but that's what I pinned. And then I got this piece at the thrift store, so it's gonna sit up. I got a goog on it. I'm gonna finish the back here, and then I'm gonna magnetize this down so that it sits up like this and then I'll add trim so you don't see and then I'm going to press this down so you don't see the pins here. So I did fully finish this and I love it so much. And then this is since 
since the last time we talked, I made this project bag. What's so awesome about this is it's an old feed bag. All right, I'm gonna take these feed bags here and keep them from going in the trash and we are gonna make some awesome stuff with it. So I've gotta wash them first and then we're gonna use them. So I've been at the barn a lot, the horse barn, and they throw away a lot of these feed bags. It's just the nature of how it is when you have like 35 plus horses and you're feeding them. Of course they have hay and everything, but they also get bagged food. And so I wash the, ba the bags with like Dawn dish soap and water, dried them, and then I'm able to cut them out and sew with them just like you would with fabric. And then I bought some sections of these are, it's like the holographic, holographic vinyl. And I wanted to test that out. So I used my sewing machine. I used, um, the thread is a thicker thread. It's a 30 weight thread. And then I used a larger sewing needle. I used a 100 slash 16 needle. So a thicker, thicker thread, thicker needle to sew. And I absolutely love it. So I fussy cut some goodies here and this is how it turned out so that's my recycled project bag i'm working on this i should have this done in the next day or two and then i'm going to fully finish it for the fair the fair their entries are due to the fairgrounds i think by august 18th so i will have it stitched and done by that point so no problemo there so those two designs this design, it's called Summer's Best. And, oh, I love this. This one was so much fun to stitch. So I, this is the first time you are seeing this one. Oh my gosh, so fun. And I loved the moose and the trees. So this is out of an older magazine. It's out of Just Cross Stitch from 2001. And there were other ones in the series. June had Spring's Joy, then Autumn Magic, and then Winter's Quest. I am looking for Winter's Quest. I got the December, what I thought was this December issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, and I don't see that design in here. So I don't know if this was a misprint or if I just didn't, if I don't have the right magazine. I'm not sure. But Just Cross Stitch, this is issue August of 20 of 2001 and yeah the designer what is her name um barbara peterson designed that summer's best so i finished that i stitched it on what did i stitch it on i gotta look at the peak sheet but i grabbed my flosses, I used spruce by Cottage Garden Threads, uh, green pepper, and then the rest of the, like I have XJU designs, and then the rest of these are color and cotton from their color, like thread of the month. In my Ziploc bag is where it all has been hanging out. And I, like I said, I really like all of these. I wanna stitch them all because the bot, so the winter one has the black bears, and then October has the canoes, which I love. And then spring has the fish. I'm not really into fish, like, like, like catching fish type fish, um, but it does have like the eagles on it. So I think that might sway me. So it's all the same stitch count. So I think that would be really fun if I could stitch the full series of this. And I stitched this on a big piece of fabric. This is from Leanne of Forbidden Fiber Co. And I got this piece from her. As you can see, I'm gonna cut this out and then I'll use it. I'll use the fabric for other stuff. All of a sudden, I can't find, I thought I put the fabric information down and apparently I didn't. So I can't tell you that. Uh, what other project haven't you seen that I've worked on? I got Freedom Fog. This is by Haystack Stitching. I got this to see how to put together one of these scissor fobs because I have never done one before. And it's stitched on like a 36 or a 40 count and I used one strand. I made a mistake. So I'm gonna put right here, I'm gonna put the decorative, I'm gonna do some decorative like star stitches right there and then figure out how to make a scissor fob. 
So I used everything the kit came for. I got the kit, I got the kit off of eBay. I just thought it was super cute. So um, that's what the back looks like. So that's one that you haven't seen that I have stitched. And then the rest of these I've, I've shown before, but if you're new to my channel, I want to make sure I show you. Uh, this is Thanksgiving gingham, but I did not stitch it on gingham fabric. I stitched it on just like a natural linen. And then I did this on an opalescent, my first finish on an opalescent fabric. And it's these little penguins. This was in magazine issue. It was like the ultimate cross stitch, ultimate cross stitch issue. And it was stitched um, on, this is Da Vinci Crystal Da Vinci Belfast. And I got, it was another one of those eight by 12 pieces that you can get. And then I used Sparkle on Sparkle. The snowflakes are stitched. I tried this like confetti coloring. And one of those from the Glamour Wonderful Threads, Glamour. Then Souvenirs of Summer. This originally came out in a Just Cross Stitch issue a while ago, and then it got re-released in this book. So I am going to fully finish this one. All of you were super nice and supportive about my little bunny here, and everyone said do a stand-up and also don't do the same fabric on the back. Do like a quilting cotton on the back. I love that suggestion. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and if time permits, I am going to make the carrots and then at the thrift store oh I don't have it to show you I got like a little garden like a wagon like a little like decorative shelf wagon I'm gonna put her in the wagon and I'm so excited so that's what she looks like then I have the I believe another Bent Creek kit and then Hold Fast. This is by Liz Matthews. I did a full color conversion and then I did not do the border around here. I'm going to figure out how to fully finish this one. And then my last one is the perforated paper. This is my first ever start and finish of a Mill Hill kit. So I'm going to finish this perforated paper and then I, I have to put the little jewel on top there and finish her. Her, the tree is a her, I've decided. <laughs> so this is everything that I'm going to work on fully finishing. And then I have a box here. I have a box here from Scarlet Sky Designs. I ordered a bunch of her finishing wood pieces and I'm going to unbox that right now and show you the unboxing of Scarlet Sky Designs and my pugs are starting to bark so follow along I'm going to show you the unboxing of this and then I want to show you this better board a little closer and maybe we'll talk about some of my art on my walls. Boo -ba -doo, 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 doo doo Scarlet Sky Designs unboxing. Going to unbox with me right now we're going to see all the goodies that I got. I purchased all of this and I got it in preparation for my fair entries and then also just to test out products as well because I am a cross stitch designer and I you know want to look at other ways of finishing my stuff and I met her at Nashville and she was so nice and I thought it's I better I better check out all of her goodies so she doesn't have them labeled, so I got to make sure I keep track of what is what. But these are the boards, and then they sit on that stand. So you can finish and then stick it on the stand, and then the stand will be upright. So I got those two. And so she does the laser cutting with the wood. And I got everything that I got is unfinished. But I do believe she sells other things too. You'll have to go look at her site. I'll have it listed. I am not affiliated with her at all. Uh, I just liked her products and wanted to try them out. Oh my gosh, here's the bunny board. Oh my gosh, I've been... She did a uh, design with Pedal Pusher, Barbie of Pedal Pusher, using this bunny board. And I literally like had a gasp moment. It was so dang cute. So here's the board and the bunny. 
So I will take it out of its container when I'm ready to use it. Awesome. And then I got this round one with the scallops. And then it's got the sitting and oh, I think there's a couple other ones in there too. I'll have to double check that. Okay, yeah, here's my invoice. And I am really excited. I'll have to just to double check everything and see what I got because if I fully finish something, then I want to be able to tell you what product I used to fully finish it. Oh, I got these. These are floss drops. I ordered these to see how they looked and I am, I love hearts and I love pink. And oh my gosh, <gasps> that is so pretty. Oh, the metallic one. Okay. Yes, please. And then there's the little spot for your dangle and yeah, it's big enough. Oh, those are so precious. And then here's the last of it here let's see what's in here i i feel so silly i literally i ordered this last month and i've been waiting to open it on camera with all of you so i've been, i kind of forgot what i bought whoopsie daisy oh cool so these are the hexagon ones i thought i could fully finish something uh with the hexagons so i got those and then these, I think, are the rectangular ones in the mounting. So I'm really excited. And I'm looking forward to painting these and fully finishing some smalls and some medium things, cross stitch on them. So I hope this was helpful. Now it's time for the better board review. Yeah. In my craft room office, I wanted to show you my Sullivan's better board. This thing is awesome. What's so awesome about it is that I don't have that much room in my studio. I actually have a bunch of supplies and stuff behind these curtains so you don't see everything that's in my office. But what is really cool and what is the cornerstone of my creative space is this better board because it, I can use it, I can move it around. And when I'm not using it, it literally folds up and stores away. So I have it here and it's literally sitting on top of my traditional ironing board and when I'm not using it I literally pull these pieces here it folds you ready for this it folds in and then I can there is these the hardware where I click this closed and then it's got a handle and I can literally carry it with me or I can put it behind my door and use it for next time. Now to my feed bag, project bags. Yeah. I was so excited to try to use this metallic iridescent style semi, semi oh, sheer see-through uh, pieces of vinyl to try out sewing. So this is my very first bag using the vinyl and all recycled materials uh, for the, the ba body of the bag. So I repurposed some of the old feed bags from the barn and I washed them with Dawn dish soap and water and then let them dry outside. And then I'm cutting this just like fabric and sewing them. I highly recommend if you are going to sew with vinyl that you use the jeans or denizer size 116s. And then I used a 12 inch zipper for this. This is the length of these really cool vinyl pieces. And what's really awesome about these is that they do come with like the anti-static cling piece. So when I was sewing, I used that. I didn't sew it, I'd like attach it, but I put it down as a guide to help me with sewing so that it didn't get caught. So I would definitely recommend you get like a denim side rated for the vinyl. And then I used a polyester thread, miniature style thread, and I'm really happy. So go slow when you're sewing. You don't want to like, like zip, zip, zippity zip when you're sewing. I made a mistake my very first go ahead 
go round with it and that had nothing to do with the vinyl and everything to do with my tension on my machine as well as I needed a full bobbin of thread I was almost out and that was user error and but I am so happy with how this looks with my recycled bag with that metallic it looks so good now it's time for my new cross stitch light yeah I want to show you my new light that I got it's really awesome so I cross stitch a lot I cross stitch pretty much every day and mostly in the evenings so I need a really nice light to work for me in my life and I am really happy with this light so I had it set on presence setting and it automatically came right up when it sensed that I was near and <laughs> I want to show you some of the best things about this lamp and how it works and then I am working on a sampler right now it's actually a Kathy Barrick sampler on black or like a charcoal black linen and I want to show you how nice it is with this light to cross stitch with it so first and foremost this light it's got this the LED white light but I don't feel like it's abrasive at all and it's got a smart dimming feature. I'm gonna pick this up. It's got a nice sturdy base, which I love. And it's got the smart dimming here, where when I set it and I like wave my hand, it will, it will adjust accordingly. I can also turn that smart dimming off and then use my finger and then it will gradually turn on and off and it almost, to me, it's like a fluid movement. It's not like eh, 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 like stepping up in light colors. Then there's the timer. So I can set this if I wanna set it for 20 minutes and then it'll go off. So I press it once for 20 minutes or I can set it for 45 minutes. So that way if I wanna cross stitch and I wanna give myself my own little timer without having to put a timer on my phone, I can do that, I can set a timer. It's got the upward lighting feature. So I wanna show you, it's got this, the here, obviously the, the bread and butter of the lamp. But if I want, I can also hit the button for upward lighting and have it illuminate upwards as well. So it's not all going down and you get a little more luminosity in your room. So that's really cool. As you can see, this has a great range of motion here. And then the base is nice and heavy so that I don't feel like when I'm moving this around, I don't feel like anything is going to fall over or tip over. It has a really nice counterbalance. I can have this up actually pretty high, which is impressive. So this is sitting on my desk and then it can go all the way up or I can flatten it all the way down. This came already fully assembled, so I don't have to worry about <laughs> that. It can fold up, so I know a lot of people like to take their lights with them on trips, like to retreats, or even just moving around the house and wanting to be able to carry something. What I like is that this can fold down this way. I wanna show you here. Um, I can fold it relatively flat, either this way or back down this way. I can fit it in my bags if I need to and then the, the power cord does come off. It has this presence sensing, which that means that it will, if I have that button set, if I walk away, like after a minute of, of walking away, it will automatically turn off and then it has the motion so that when I walk in or like kind of um, in this general area, it'll turn back on again. So I wanna show you here, I'm gonna turn this up and then I stitch in hand. So I don't, I, I am able to go ahead and start stitching right away with this nice light. And then I can move around in my home with this light and really be able to work. What I also love is I can use this here if I'm not cross stitching for general crafts. I have my Cricut 
here. So if I'm doing any crafting like that, I was pinning uh, my cross stitch earlier. So I was able for, for cross stitch finishing, I was able to do that. And I was able to do that all here at my desk with this lamp. So this we can work on a side table as well as your desk, which I love having that versatility. So I really hope this is helpful to you. And I hope I've inspired you maybe for a new lamp for your cross stitching journey or crafting journey, whatever that might be. All right. Thank you all for joining me. And I hope you have a beautiful week of stitching and a beautiful week, whatever that entails for you. I wish you the best and sending lots of love to you. And remember, you matter. Here, let me put the light on me. You matter and your stitching matters. Take care.